The Heartland Corridor is Norfolk Southern's initiative to provide a direct double stack container route from the busy seaports in Virginia to the Midwestern Gateway of Chicago. This direct passageway shaves nearly 250 miles and up to a full day of transit from the previous double stack routes. This was one of the largest engineering projects in Norfolk Southern's history with 53 project sites along 379 miles of railroad. Yeah, the Harlan project itself is, is a tremendous undertaking, engineering feat really. Uh, I don't think any railroad has uh, tried a project or, or, or attempted a project of this magnitude. For Norfolk Southern, it's, it's definitely uh, one of the largest projects that, that was done over the last hundred years. You know, at the height of the, of the project, uh, we had uh, structural modifications underway in 12 tunnels simultaneously. Yeah, in my 33 years with Norfolk Southern Railway, I, I've been a part of some pretty big construction projects, but uh, none of them can compare to the magnitude of the Heartland Quarter. Uh, this type of project for a civil engineer or a structural engineer is, uh, is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, a once-in-a-career opportunity. It's, it's been a privilege for me to work on the project. The engineering planning stage began in 2005. For the next several years, Norfolk Southern tested and prepared for the immense construction task. A lot of challenges in working with the design engineers and, and our construction managers to uh, develop a design that was safe first and foremost for both the folks doing the work and, and the train crews that would have to operate through it as the work was being progressed. For the most part, we've had very little difficulties through the project. We did a lot of investigative uh, drilling and probing before we started. We've had some minor, a uh, little bit poorer ground in a couple spots than we, we anticipated, but with the, with the plans we had and, and uh, the specifications in place, we were able to overcome those and, and march right ahead. Most of the construction sites focused on the railroad tunnels carved into the Appalachian Mountains, ranging in length from 174 to 3,300 feet. These tunnels were constructed around the turn of the 20th century for coal trains and then upgraded in the 1980s and 90s to accommodate the 19-foot-tall multi-level rail cars. But the current double-stack container trains require a clearance of an additional two feet. On the Harlan project, we're clearing 28 tunnels that have uh, clearance deficiencies. We're having to do something too. Four in Virginia, one in Kentucky, and 23 in West Virginia. I had them all up and put them back to back and they would stretch about 5.7 miles. There were several techniques used to gain the clearances needed. The preferred method was track lowering. In lowering the track, uh, the, the crews came in with a large vacuum with a cutting head that will literally just pick up ballast, you know, dirt, and take it right down to the floor of the tunnel. That allows you to get a lot of the material out of the way very efficiently. A second method, often used along with track lowering, was track realignment. There were three tunnels along the route that had originally been constructed as double track tunnels that were now single track tunnels and the track was to one side. So we were able to realign the track towards the center of the tunnel and lower it slightly and gain the clearance we needed at those locations. Most of the tunnels in the Heartland Corridor could not be modified by track realignment or lowering. If a small amount of clearance was needed, the arch of the tunnel crown was notched to carve a clearance passage in the existing roof. A minimum of four inches of roof lining was left intact to maintain sufficient strength to contain rock falls. If needed, steel dowels were installed into the crowns to allow for stress transfer. If notching could not safely provide enough clearance, crown replacement was necessary. Although this was the most extensive and costly of all the methods, most of the tunnels in the Heartland Corridor required crown replacement. In crown replacement, we uh, demolished the crown of the liner. Then uh, we had the clearance that we needed once we got the liner out of the way. Then what you have to do is stabilize the ground that's behind the liner. Uh, if you have very good hard rock, we installed rock bolts. Uh, the rock bolts generally ranged in length from 12 feet to 30 feet. 
and they went into the rock that deep. And then we cover all that with a minimum of four inches of gunite or shotcrete, which is basically sprayed concrete uh, that has steel fiber reinforcing. There are places where we weren't able to get an effective suitable roof with rock bolts and, and gunite and then we had to go to steel sets which are curved I-beams or H-beams and then for the final product we fill that void up with grout or lean concrete and then we spray the underside uh, that you see if you're standing there on the track with gunite uh, for a minimum of four inches of gunite. After all clearance modifications were completed the track itself was upgraded. The last job was remove the track, totally replace it with all new ballast, all new ties, new rail, and put it to the both vertical and horizontal alignment because both are very critical within tunnels uh, for clearance. From day one, one of the biggest challenges on this project was to be able to find the time to do a project of this magnitude and still be able to give our customers reliable service. Our service design and transportation department have done a magnificent job in planning and executing the plan. And they've been able to give us 10 hours a day, starting at 2 a.m. in the morning until noon. And those, those times were set around some of our most time sensitive freight. And we have to be in the clear at noon because trains are waiting on both ends of the tunnels for us to, to come through when we clear. Everyone involved in it realized that going in, transportation folks and the engineering folks, and I think that's, that's why there was such great cooperation between the departments, because everybody understood that this was a very important project for the future of Norfolk Southern. The years of careful planning paid off. Construction started in 2007 at Cowan Tunnel near Radford, Virginia. The first double stack trains are scheduled to use the corridor in 2010, right on schedule. The Heartland Corridor was a monumental engineering project, but it is also part of a larger picture, creating faster, more efficient, higher capacity rail routes that will make America more competitive in the future.